Tonight, I pull a caravan. Hammond looks sad. And James runs away. Hello and welcome back to a brand new series. Yes, this is a completely redone brand new series of Top Gear in game. And today we are going to start off by looking, well, not necessarily at this. However, what this is, is indeed the Porsche 944 Turbo. Now, as you know, last week I did indeed review this. And today we've got something similar, just it's not in kind of Kerbal form. And it is a lot better. However, what it is, it is a Porsche. However, what kind of a Porsche is it? No, no, not now, no, no. This is the RUF CTR-3. It has a 753 brake horsepower engine with the Porsche's 3.8 litre flat 6 mid-engine beast. It has a top speed of 192 miles per hour and has a 30 centimetre long wheelbase. This allows for turning at higher speeds. It has 701 pounds per foot to torque and it weighs 1,400 kilograms. However, all of this comes at a cost. A cost of roughly around £330,000. And that's a lot of money for a Porsche. Or is it? Now with this car, when you go to pick up yours from an RUF dealer, uh, which indeed there aren't many, but you know, you have a series of kind of like customizable things to make sure your car is a bit more homely, as James May would say. Uh, if we just quickly pull over, there are many things such as coloured interiors, so as you see this one's got blue leathered seats and a blue steering wheel. This car also follows up with a very minimalistic look with little buttons. It also has a TV screen, just so you can see we're reversing because they haven't realised that a back window is a thing yet. So, is it any good? Can it power slide? These are the main questions. Well, I can safely assure you that it definitely can power slide. It can stick its tail out, do drift, whatever you send it. Of course, that comes at the big hefty price tag of nearly 330,000 Great British Pounds. However, when you think of that, if you have that kind of money, you're not really bothered what you spend it on, are you? Unless, of course, you just won the lottery and that's your leftovers and you've got the choice to either get yourself out of debt or put yourself into even more debt and buy one of these. But, you know, I mean... I honestly love this car. I mean, it's nice, it handles well. I mean, compared to a lot of cars, it's cheap for the speed you can get, it's cheap for the handling, and I will admit the brakes are a bit off. That That's one thing. Um, but, however, this doesn't really matter when you're on the track. Sliding, sliding, sliding. Ho, 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 let's do that again. Right, power. And break! Oh, hoo, 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 hoo. flaming hell! God, blimey! It's not every day you get to do this. All right, let's do it again. This car is just amazing at power slides. It's, it's weird. It's, it's out of this world. It's like an alien made it and probed it before landing it down on this planet as a holy shrine. However, there are other problems with this car rather than just things. For starters, who exactly would buy such a car? Well, to be honest, these cars are model of Porsches. They're basically a Pimp My Ride version of the Porsche. However, Richard Hammond buys Porsches. So if you buy one of these, then technically you're no better than a teeth whitening wannabe American brummy. So just bear that in mind. But to be honest, when you drive this thing, all of that goes out the window. Okay, so I'm probably not the first to admit this, but I do like this car. I will be honest, as much as it might make me a teeth whitening wannabe American Brummy, I'm not really that bothered. It's a very, very, very nice car. It handles nice, it power slides, which is brilliant. It's got plenty of power, has a good top speed of around 190. And to be honest, I mean, the handling, it's just... Fantastic what they've managed to put into this car. I mean, 
It's amazing. There is a slight few problems, I will admit. Like when you go to do a power slide sometimes, it does just shoot off the end, which is a bit of an issue. So there we have it. The RUF CT3. Do I recommend it? Well, unless you're a teeth whitening, middle-aged man going through midlife crisis, no, not really. However, for this kind of money, and for even less, you could get a Mercedes SLS AMG and be a lot happier. So there it was, the CTR-3. However, now we must see how fast it goes around our track. And in order to do this, we must hand it over to our team racing driver. Some say he sounds like Tiff Needle, and if you plug him in, he starts playing music. All we know is, he's called the Stig! So here's Stig with our first night lap. Yes, we could only fit in a night time this one, but nevertheless, it's a lap. So off Stig goes, yes, he's off again. Off he goes, he's coming up to the big S-bend kind of thing. Um, because basically this corner has many S turns in it and it's very interesting. So here he comes. Can he make it round? Ooh, yes, he's handling these corners very well with good old stiggers. Here we are at the hairpin bend. Can he make it round? Oh, yes, and he does it in fashion. Just a typical stig there, showing off a bit. But you know what? When you can do this inside an RUF, or better in a Mercedes SLS AMG. Why not? I mean, why not? But anyway, here he comes. He's on to another straight of many. And he's up here on the next corner. Another hairpin turn. There are a lot of tight turns and little straights on this. Which makes it a very, very interesting kind of course to go round. Because it really does push the car to whatever limits there is. He's got one last hairpin bent to tackle. Andy, oh, he slightly messes that up on Gambon. But anyway, he's coming down the straight. He's on his way down the straight. Always oh, even using the special onboard nitros fitted to this car. And across the line. So there was Stig taking it there all around the track. Yes, indeed, it went round very fast. However, he did it in a time of two minutes. And 22 seconds, so yes, that is indeed the fastest we've ever had round our track that has been recorded round that track. So in other words, it's the fastest because it's the only car that's been round, right? Let's get on to the news. And I have some news, yes indeed, I do. And um, according to recent predictions, due to heavy employment and that kind of stuff, apparently Apple are going to be making a car. Now, I can think of a reason why this isn't going to work, and bear in mind, I'm the only person who knows this. It isn't going to have windows, is it? Think about it, it's an Apple car. A, it's not going to work, because it means it's electric, and electric cars never work. But it's not going to have windows, is it, if it's an Apple car? Oh god, Jeremy, shut up, you're thinking too hard, you're going to have a headache, and then you're going to have to go to a hospital, and it, it's just going to be terrible, please stop thinking. My Daisy has windows. Oh god, not this again. But anyway, I have news of a new car, yes, and uh, it's not a Dacia Sundero, sadly, I don't see why they haven't made a second version of that. However, it is indeed a Pagani Huayra Roadster. Yes, they are making a Roadster version. However, it will be coming in around 2016. It's going to be convertible, and it's going to have a 6-litre twin-turbo 730 brake horsepower engine. It's going to have a lot of torque, and apparently it can do 0-60 to in 2.9 seconds, which sounds pretty good. Obviously not as good as my Dacia. James, shut up! I don't care about your stupid Dacia. But anyway, yes, the Pagani Huayra, it actually looks really cool. I saw a picture of um, what it could look like obviously there's no proper pictures yet but it still looks cool i've got that and my porsche lined up so um i'm very happy about that kill me now you say that but indeed it does indeed look very nice i will be honest i mean it's kind of got that nice sleek look well of course these are leaked pictures however though i i i look forward to this i think this might be one of the supercars that i might actually enjoy as long as there's kind of like a nice comfort mode then i should be fine and so that is it for the news, indeed. Now, 
We had a slight problem, as you know, as the Top Gear version. We hate caravans. Caravans are annoying. There's lumps that go along the road going very slowly. They slow everybody down. And for the money that you spend on it, you could have a nice holiday. And the producers overheard us having a rant about this. So yes, they thought it would be funny to send us on a caravan holiday. Yes, we had to go on a caravan holiday. So the next morning we packed our bags and set off on what would be a very long and boring journey. I spy my little eye something beginning with G. Grass. I spy my little eye something beginning with S. Sky. Ooh, I've got a good one. I spy with my little eye something beginning with G. Grass. Eventually it started to put a bit of a strain on us. Honestly, I don't see why anyone does caravanning. So far, we've been driving for three hours, we've got about a kilometre away, and we're still doing nothing. We've ran out of games to play. Ugh. Ooh, a nice, lovely ham and cheese sandwich with fresh mayonnaise. A succulent sausage sandwich with tomato -y ketchup. Or maybe that should be Cumberland sausages with that tomato ketchup. How about a boiled egg? Would you rather drive a Ford KA or be pumped into an incinerator? I'd probably say pumped into an incinerator. I'm sorry, but seriously, what what is there to do here? So far, as I said before, we've been driving now for about, what is it, four hours? We're in the middle of nowhere, and what, what in the past hour, four hours, have I done anything that I would class to be on holiday? I've drove, I've crashed, I've thought about food, and we played the same game over five million times because all there is is just sky grass, sky grass. Sadly, however, this grew an ever-growing problem. What well, what happens if I need the toilet? Um, I don't know. Just there's, there's a bottle somewhere. Just do it and out. Yeah. However, luckily we were soon approaching our hill's destination. What I want to know is, what exactly are we going to do when we get there? Because, what, what, what do you do on a caravan holiday? So far we played I Little Spy, whatever it is. That, that, that got boring. Um, ooh, a sausage sandwich. Yeah, so we thought about that. What, what else is there to do? However, we were far from life and solutions. Going up, going up, going up. Going up. I can just imagine it now in Morocco. On a beach. Nice and warm. But instead, no, I'm here in a Land Rover sat next to two absolute pillocks carrying a massive piece of whatever heavy crap behind me. What, what, what am I doing here? What, what's the purpose of all this? But I mean, for the price of the caravan, which was about 1500 yeah, for that you could get a respectable holiday for like a week or so. Instead, you decide to pay for a flaming fiberglass shell with some things inside of it in which you just have a miserable time. And it's in Britain, that just makes it even worse. You're cold, you're wet, you've got nothing to do. Oh god, why the hell are we doing this? Because the producers told us to. However, before it was taking longer, now it could take even longer. I bet you my Mercedes could get up here faster than this. I bet I, bet I could do this trip like 12 times back and forth by the time it takes us to get up this damn hill. Come on, power! All of a sudden, I had a feeling we weren't going to make it. Finally, we arrived. So we found a spot and parked up. And much to our surprise, it was everything we expected. I'm sorry, but what are we- oh, god. What, what are we meant to do other than run off to the- Oh, god! HELP! Luckily, Hammond managed to turn it around. Put the flaming brakes on next time. So yeah, as, as I was saying, what do we do? Do we set up? 
Well, might as well go have a look inside. What's it like? Ow. Oh, wow, that looks really five class in there, doesn't it? Oh, look at this. Uh, oh, wow, look at that as a bed. Hang on, is that a double bed? Well, you two are sleeping on that. I will admit, sleeping next to James May isn't a brilliant thing, but it's better than sleeping on that. In my opinion, anything's better than sleeping with James May. So, hold on, hold on. Let's just do a quick sit rep here. So, we've drove for two days straight in a car with you two to get here, to park up, find out the car wasn't parked, and then I ended up then being carted off with it. Then to find out none of the tyres work. Then to find out I've got to sleep in a double bed with James May in the middle of nowhere in Britain where it's raining, it's wet, it's cold. Why couldn't we go somewhere nicer? But more importantly, what the hell do we even do out here? I don't know, go spotting or something? James, I'm not going spotting in the middle of nowhere. Well, no, it'll be alright. It's romantic. Don't say things like that! I'm going in the same bed as you! I tell you what, James, if you want to go spotting, then off you go, but I'm connecting the gas. Oh, wait. Where do we connect the gas? Ooh, maybe I'll see a Dacia Sandero and some pie. Ooh, there's some mountains. All of a sudden, I got bored and decided to drive around. There's got to be something to do around here, surely. However, after many hours of driving, I came to the conclusion that there was nothing. However, I'd been out so long that by the time I got back, it was night. And much to Hammond's liking and my surprise, James wasn't there. Oi, Hamster, where's Captain Sensible gone? I don't know. But you've got lucky then. So I've been out here on this so-called holiday now for a few days, and all I've done is drive around be bored in the middle of nowhere, lose James May, which I guess is a positive, which is why you might want to buy a caravan. And now I've got to sleep on this thing. However, that morning we got a rude awakening from James May. You alright? Sir James Attenborough, how the hell did you get lost for that long? Ah, you see, I was lost. In fact, I actually just stayed in the hotel just up the road. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're telling me you just found a hotel and you said... So I slept in that thing with Richard all night for nothing. Yeah, well, you could have come bird watching with me and then you would have not had to sleep with him. Sometimes you are a total utter... However, I was awakened by their insults. Oi, James, where have you been? He's been the biggest pillock, that's where he's been. No, I mean, I asked you if you wanted to come with me. I just went off to the local hotel and slept in that instead. Why didn't you tell me that? Why did you tell me that you wanted to do bird watching? Well, that's what I was going to do, but then I got lost and then I saw a hotel, so I was like, you know what? I'm staying there and... Oh, I had the best great English breakfast this morning. Right. Um, just, just wait a second. May I direct your attention to this? The, the wheels are broken. How are we going to get back? Well, if you opened up your eyes, in fact, you would have seen that I drove in a Land Rover. So that's how we're going to get back. That's a good idea. Let's leave it. So with that, we headed back home. And James May had some slightly good news. Oh yeah, I saved you um, a piece of bacon. There you go. Oh, cheers. Food! So overall, I actually enjoyed that caravan holiday. I had a nice luxury bed, a great English breakfast, and I even got to get lost and see some daisies and pies and birds. It was brilliant. James, you didn't actually go on the holiday, so shut up. Well, I did. I just used my initiative compared to you two morons. So on that bombshell, thank you so very much for watching, and good night!